So I will be calling up Ada Nduka Oyom and Samson God. Hi everyone. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Ada Nduka Oyom, also known as Kolokodes. And this is Samson Godi, our co-founder at Open Source Community Africa. And we are... And we're going to be speaking about um, open source, re evangelizing the open source gospel. Basically giving you a rundown of how things have been since the last Open Source Community Africa Festival. So, meet me. Don't mind all of this grammar here, but I'll try to break it down very briefly. I mentioned earlier that I'm the co-founder of Oscar. I am also the founder of Shikura Africa. I know there are so many SCA queens here. <laughs> Period. And um, what, she, what we do at Shikura Africa is to help uh, a lot of African young girls and women in tech come together and build your careers, giving you a platform. And then also, I am the founder of DevRel Light. I am heavily focused on developer relations, aside advocating for gender equality. So I started DevRel Light to help anybody who's trying to get into DevRel. Then at Google, many of you might have seen me at the stand, at Google stand. I'm also a community manager at Google. I'm helping manage the GDG community. Are there GDG organizers here? Or GDG participants? Good. I help manage the GDG communities and the women tech maker community as well. And lastly, you find me doing crazy stuff on TikTok as a content creator and also I'm a technical writer. Okay, so I'm not a community manager at Google, but I'm a community manager at Twitter Spaces. <laughs> so, my name is Samson Godi. Um, some of you probably know me talking a lot about Sapa, you know, the whole of it. <laughs> but yeah, so I do a lot of open source stuff, um, being the co-founder for the Open Source Community Africa, uh, which is the organization behind the Open Source Festival. If some of you don't know, I know you're here for maybe Prosper's talk and other things, including jollof rice. It's fine. But yes, um, I'm the co-founder for the Open Source Community Africa. I do a lot of things around open source, and I think if I want to list out things that I do, you probably might not be going to there. But um, just like I said, um, you can follow me on Twitter um, at Samson underscore Gaudi, and then uh, you can go. Yeah. Okay, so why Oscar? I know for many of you, this might be the very first event. If this is your first time attending an Oscar event, please raise your hand. Amazing, that's awesome. So I'm going to give you a brief rundown of why Samson and I decided to start Oscar. Um, over a couple of years, Sam, that Samson and I had known each other, I think before pre-2016, we would have conversations, and Samson would keep giving me all these stories about how he's doing this with open source, he's doing that with open source. And note, I have been building communities right from uni. So I wanted to see a way for us to bring these opportunities. Trust me, these opportunities were mind-blowing. But I noticed that there weren't so many people who were conversant about open source, or even there wasn't an active community, because I had to do a lot of Googling around it. So I decided to bring my knowledge of community building and Samson's knowledge of open source to start what we know today as Open Source Community Africa, AKA Oscar. So, so this is a breakdown of what Oscar as a community is all about. Especially for first timers, this is an amazing way for you to get to really embrace the Oscar culture. We're two things. We're one part community and then we're one part project. Some of you might come from the community aspect. Some of you might come from the project aspect as contributors. Now for community, our goal is to create as many chapters as possible to help spread the gospel. Remember the topic was... Um, the topic was around spreading the OSS gospel. So we're trying to create as many chapters across Africa in a way that the open source spirit isn't just felt in, Af in Lagos alone, but in as many African countries as possible. And then we have the festival, which is our headline annual event. Hopefully COVID doesn't interrupt again, but headline annual event. And then for the project part, we have two, which is advocacy and contributors. So Prosper has given a lot of ginger about contributing to open source. The Oscar, um, this thing, GitHub, the Oscar GitHub organization page is a good way to start your journey as contributors. 
And then we want to create as many advocates as possible. I know from today's event, a lot of you are already out there speaking and evangelizing about open source. The idea isn't just for you to come here and learn from all of the amazing speakers, but we also want to see that spirit being reignited in contributions across different global projects. So now here's the journey so far from 2020, the last festival, till now. So in 2020, I and Ada were on the same stage talking about a bunch of things, and all of you were so excited, and then what happened? COVID. Uh, to be honest, that was the first time in a while that I stayed in one location for more than six months. It was terrible, but then COVID happened. So obviously, this was the, the, the last photo, I believe, somewhere around this location here, Zone Tech Park, where we did the first ever open source festival. And we're so excited, and we're like, okay, you know what? We should probably do something in late 2020. And guess what? Our village people decided to visit us. <laughs> and then there was COVID. Um, yeah, next. So, but one of the interesting things about the Open Source Festival, and why I think, in my opinion, that's one of the best things that would happen to your career and also to me, is that the power of what we're trying to push. And the first thing is network. I'm sure some of you here might have seen Nada, Prosper, Ada, maybe not me because I like dragging people on Twitter sometimes. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure that's, that's one of the goals that we're here so that you can network, supercharge your career, so you can become an excellent developer's advocate or be in Lagos today and tomorrow in Dubai and next tomorrow in Poland. And of course, try as much as you can to travel as much as you can. But yeah, but anyways, network is something, um, one of the things that the open source community Africa were really, really excited about, and that's why we're happy that everybody's here. And the goal is to make sure that you make as much network as possible. And then in terms of sustainability, um, I think Chris and also Nada, maybe Prosper, and some of the, um, I think most of the speakers here have been talking about funding, funding, funding. And of course, on Twitter, and also like using our community Discord, there's a lot of questions about why is it so hard for people to host events in Africa? Why is it so hard for people to host events in Lagos and to be able to get money into the continent? So that's something that I'm going to be talking later in the talk. But then the goal is to make sure that when we bring in people today, obviously from co-founders to CEOs to developers advocate that has large budgets working from different companies, of course, go and drag at that later for more sponsorship from Google. But the point is you have the ability to come explain yourself, what you're trying to achieve, and be able to build more sustainability model. And of course, as time goes on, we at Oscar, we're trying to look for ways that we could help create a Cinemax experience that can better look for ways to sustain open source in general. And of course, career. Um, my question is, how many of you here are paid technologists? Not programmers, not designers. You're in tech and you're being paid. Raise up your hand. Raise up your hand. So I'm saying, let me repeat again, let me repeat again. You are working in tech, or you're in tech, and you're being paid to work in tech. Raise up your hand. Oh my choco. <laughs> now, the reason why I asked this question is because that was one of the highlights of the Open Source Festival in 2020. And I'm sure Ada and some of the community members have been able to hear. When, COVID, when the, the festival happened in 2020, I remember asking this question in the same hall, and obviously, during COVID, a lot of companies decided to do remote jobs. There was more requests for developers' advocacy. There was more requests for engineers. And guess what? A lot of people started getting jobs. Now, this is an opportunity for you to be here, listening to talks, going to talk to the sponsors. Of course, as Prosper says, build more op um, APIs, build more things that are surrounded and more people really care about. And of course, with open source, there's a great network of people and a great network of individuals. They enable you to build your career. I started, when I started learning how to code, I've never ever worked in an office before. Like, I don't know what it looks like to work in the four corner of an office. So working remotely has always been part of my culture. And that's one of the things that I saw greatly when the positive, I don't want to say positive of COVID, but that was one of the things that we saw when COVID happened and which Ada is going to be explaining more. Okay, so after 2020, our uh, first ever headline event, we had so many things in plan because the idea was to build that momentum. You know how everyone is so gingered right now, oh, Oscar first, open source, I'm going to go contribute, but then COVID was like, psych, no you. So we had to re-strategize on a lot of things, and how did we do that? The first thing we did was to 
understand that there wasn't going to be any opportunity of physical events very soon. So we had to channel all our energy towards virtual events. A big shout out to our community managers, Edith Young and Bolaji. Please, let's give them a round of applause. So the next thing we also did was try as much as possible to partner with brother developer communities like She Code Africa, Facebook Developer Circles, and some other minor community, um, communities in different localities. And then last thing we did was try as much as possible to amplify social media events. Now there's a reason why we focused heavily on social media activities. A majority of us here identify as millennials and Gen Zs? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> yes or yes? yes? Exactly. And we know that one easiest way to reach a lot of people, especially during the lockdown period, was via social media. Info spreads faster. Communication um, spreads faster as well. So we tried as much as possible to amplify our social media activities. And in a space of two years, here's some of the impact that we were able to create. It's not much but we like to see it as a success story. So first, for our chapters and communities, also a very huge shout out to all of the Oscar chapter leads in here. Please, another round of applause if you're one of them. So from 2020, after Oscar Fest, we grew our community to 1K community members. We had um, our chapter presence in about five countries and approximately 15 chapter leads. Now from 2020, 2021 into 2022, we've grown to 2.4K community members. And I'm hoping everyone who is here is, also, is already a community member, but if you're not, there will be a link to sign up on our Discord channel pretty soon. And then we've spread to over nine countries, um, Nigeria, Ghana, Mauritius, Cameroon, I can't remember the remaining, but over nine countries with 60 chapter leads, which is a huge thing, meaning that every country, every locality where a chapter lead is present, the gospel of open source is being evangelized there, and that's a huge thing to us. And then for programs, um, the reason why I think I'm really excited about this side of the slide is because when I met some of you, you were talking about, oh, how do I contribute to open source? What do I do? How do I make money? You know, I'm sure Angina talked about outreachy. There's programs like Google Summer of Code. There's a lot of things out there. And one of the things that happened in 2020 during COVID, I believe between 2020 and um, early 2021. Wait, can you all hear me? Yes. Are you hungry? Yes. Why? <laughs> no worry, there's jello fries. Don't worry, there's jello fries. Don't worry. Calm down, calm down, it's jello fries. Okay, let me repeat myself again. So yeah. As I was saying, there's a lot of outre outreach programs that enable you, structure you, and put you in positions for you to be able to not just contribute to open source, but be able to grow your network and be able to test your skills. And that's one of the interesting things that Open Source Community Africa is trying to drive. So yeah, we did something called the Open Source Challenge by Oscar in 2020, or 2021, I believe. Sorry, my memory is crazy right now. But the thing is, we started, we did collaborate with one existing organization, and we're like, wait, we can able to do this and because, again, because of COVID, we were not able to host physical events. So we decided to use social media to draw people in. And at the end of the day, there was a lot of people that contributed to the project. They reached out. They wouldn't use that as an opportunity to get jobs, which kind of reference to the last slide I was talking about. So for partnerships and collaborations, I know this sounds like uh, they're reading their annual reports for us. But the idea is to make sure that Every single person understands the reason why we're having Oscar Fest. It's not just to bring people together for three days, and then you marry, you meet your mentors, you meet your, uh, your friends, and then you go back home. We are really, really keen, we're really, really committed to building that open source culture and that open source community within Africa. So some of the collaborations and partnerships we did first is with She Code Africa. Even as much as we're trying to build the open source ecosystem, we're trying to get more Africans into open source, we also want to create more diversity. Like I mentioned earlier on, I'm very keen about um, gender diversity and advocacy. So we brought together She Code Africa and Open Source to create what we call WOSCA, Women of OSCA. And so far, we've been able to reach about 100 ladies from our program. And then another Another partnership is with the Facebook Developer Circle, where, just like um, Samson mentioned, we have the OSS Immersion Program. 
And then for the Open Source Festival and the Sustain Africa, which I think some of you, I'm sorry for people that have been dragging me on Twitter, it was not my intention. The goal is to expand from next year. But anyways, the Open Source Festival, like I explained, is the opportunity for you to come, network, discuss, collaborate, listen to talks, sometimes good talks or sometimes boring talks, depending on who you're looking at. And of course, get to follow those people that you've been trying to send DMs or meet those clicks or join a new click, depending on which side of the, the coin you're in. And of course, one of the interesting things about um, the festival or what we're trying to do is the other section, which is the Sustain Africa. And just like what I said, we're looking forward to ways that we're not just you know, bringing people here, but also listening to the conversation on social media, in conversations, at events, at conferences, and of course, individual conversations that we're having so that we can understand the ways that we can improve the ecosystem and look for ways to sustain it. So moving forward, plan for 2022. And like I mentioned earlier, hopefully COVID or some random virus doesn't interrupt anything. We plan to continue collaborations with some existing communities like Shikoda Africa to keep running the Women of Open Source Community Africa program. Now, that's, that's really excited to be honest. But in terms of roadmap, and I'm sure that this is one of the things that would answer most of your questions, not just coming here, but also maybe if you're going to Discord, you can have an idea of what we're thinking about. Now, in early, before the festival, our focus was to focus on educating people about what open source looks like, educating people about what the open source community looks like, and of course, maybe some random things like programming, advocacy, and even technical writing, including how to improve yourself as a designer. Like, we have a really great network of, of people, and we have a really diverse teams in terms of skill set. Now, one of the things that we're, we're trying to push, and I'm sure with GitHub, Acto, uh, the Hacktoverse report, I believe in the last three to four years, you've been seeing a lot of really, really, really great projects coming out of Africa. But we want to do more, we want to be there, we want to be, of course, Africa is over one point something billion people, and one of the interesting things about our population is that in countries like Nigeria, we're over 70% with under the age of 30. So that means we have more energy to do a lot of things, but we need to also think about how are the ways that we can push things out there so that people, companies that depend on, like basically people will be depending on Africa, and that's one of the ways you can do it. And one of the things we're trying to do is to push projects by creating more initiative coming forward. So those are the things that we're gonna be announcing going forward. And of course, in terms of community and chapters, if you go to oscar.com, um, Oscar, the OSCAfrica.org OSC slash community, you're going to learn more about what these things looks like. But the goal here is we know that there's a lot of communities out there, and we're not trying to create something different. We want to integrate with any existing thing you're thinking about. If you have ideas, if it's something that is related to open source, you come together. And the way we're trying to do that is to obviously support the existing communities, but also create city chapter programs that enable you to reach Oscar within your own city without having to travel to Lagos. And of course, I know that for people that traveled into Lagos, it was a lot, lot, lot more expensive. And that's why I'm really, really excited. I'm really grateful that many of you, despite the situation of the support, situation of the country, people decided to fly in, which is really, really good. And of course, with partnership, um, just like what Adam mentioned, we've been collaborating with Shikoda Africa, We've been collaborating with the existing organization, but we're looking for more organization to partner with. So if you're an organization here, companies, projects, or even as small as you think you are, or whatever you, you classify yourself to be, we're really open, and we want to receive more partnerships. So please, you can reach out to either myself or Ada later on, or you can go to our community Discord to ask questions. And now, one of the interesting about this partnership, I know 2020, I referenced a little bit about it, but this year, we're going to emphasize more. Um, how many of you here know ASCID made in Nigerian or made in Nigeria um, created list on GitHub? How many of you? Wow. How many of you here know GitHub? <laughs> what do you use GitHub for? Huh? Huh? Now, wow. <laughs> anyways, anyways, the point here is um, the Open Source Community Africa and the um, Open Source um, Open Collective have been in partnership for more than two years. And one of the things that we're looking forward to improve is that, yes, while you're in the, in the Western world, in the US or whatever continent you're in, you have the ability to work in open source full time. I've been privileged enough to do that, and I'm sure some of the speakers here have been in that position. But we have a lot of people here. Obviously, the question I asked earlier, getting jobs and all that. But we are looking forward to the way that if you're building an open source project that people maintain, we want to be able to work with you so that you can be able to raise more money, so you can afford that MacBook Pro 
or the, what's the new M1 chip again? The M1 Ultra, I believe. You understand? Or obviously, you can use them buy modular price if you wish to. But then, the goal here is, if you're, if you're building an open source project and you don't have anywhere or any place that you, or you don't have any questions, sorry, or you have questions and you want to sustain that project, you go to the open source community Africa Discord, ask questions, and we can look for ways that we can support you and, of course, get to house your project. Anyways, thank you. Thank you. My name remains Samson Gaudi. Please, thank you very much.